Welcome to name that pathology. Sano Nerds presents Pancreas Pathology. This episode is going to be a little different. Grab a piece of paper and pen, you'll want to keep track of your score. There are five rounds, each covering a different topic about pancreas pathology. Round 1. Acute versus Chronic Pancreatitis. For each characteristic listed, decide if it better describes acute pancreatitis or chronic pancreatitis. What is an enlarged pancreas commonly seen with? Acute pancreatitis. Acute processes often cause an organ to become edematous or enlarged. Which pancreatitis will make the pancreas appear hyperechoic? Chronic pancreatitis. Calcifications and fibrotic changes can make the pancreas brighter. Who more likely has severe epigastric pain? Acute pancreatitis. Pain is found at the location of the pancreas in the central, upper abdomen. Which pancreatitis is more likely to be heterogeneous? Acute pancreatitis. Another feature in acute diseases, the pancreas is very heterogeneous. Alcoholism is more likely to cause this type of pancreatitis. Chronic pancreatitis. Without the gallbladder, heavy drinking is more likely to cause long-term inflammation of the pancreas. Which pancreatitis is indicated with elevated lipase? Acute pancreatitis. If a patient has blood work done in the first three to five days of acute pancreatitis, amylase and lipase will be elevated. Lipase remains elevated for a longer period of time and is a better indicator of acute pancreatitis by the time a patient seeks treatment. Which will cause the pancreas to appear smaller than normal? Chronic pancreatitis. Chronic diseases often cause the organ to become shrunken. When will labs be normal to slightly elevated? Chronic pancreatitis. Chronic pancreatitis exhibits mostly normal labs, with the possibility of slightly elevated serum lipase and amylase. Which pathology will cause the pancreas to appear hypoechoic? Acute pancreatitis. Which pathology can cause calcifications to form? Chronic pancreatitis. Who will experience epigastric pain that comes and goes? Chronic pancreatitis. The patient might also experience symptoms related to a non-functional pancreas. Which pancreatitis is more likely to be associated with gallstones? Acute pancreatitis. Gallstones that block the pancreatic duct can cause pancreatitis and other complications. Listen to the sonographer report their findings to the radiologist and review the significant images and worksheet. What is the most likely diagnosis? Pam Halpert is a 45-year-old female presenting to the ER today for epigastric pain that has been lasting for about 10 days. She has known gallstones and labs are significant for increased lipase. Today's ultrasound again shows a mobile stone in the gallbladder without wall thickening, which is similar to previous ultrasounds. The pancreas appears edematous and hypoechoic with a prominent duct of Wursung, measuring 4 mm.
If you came up with acute pancreatitis, great job. Lipase stays elevated longer with acute pancreatitis than amylase does. Remember long lipase. Most acute processes make an organ look bigger, heterogeneous and hypoechoic. Plus, the number one cause of acute pancreatitis is gallstones. Listen to the sonographer present this case to the radiologist. Review the worksheet and significant images. What is the most likely diagnosis? John Dorian, a 67-year-old male is an inpatient upstairs. He was admitted to the hospital for dull epigastric pain with slightly elevated lipase. He has had multiple cases of pancreatitis prior to his cholecystectomy three years ago. Patient states they recently quit drinking and smoking and wonders if that is why they don't feel well. Today's ultrasound shows a mostly normal complete abdominal ultrasound. The pancreas was only partially seen, but appears to be hyperechoic and smaller than expected. Did you come up with chronic pancreatitis? Excellent work. The number one cause of chronic pancreatitis is alcoholism. It is also seen in patients with a history of acute pancreatitis and smoking. Chronic diseases tend to make organs small and echogenic. Sometimes calcifications and fibrotic tissue result from the ongoing injury to the organ. Labs can be normal to slightly elevated. In severe cases there might be evidence of the pancreas not working at all. How did you do? There was a total of 14 points for round 1. Round 2. Pancreatitis Complications There are many complications that can arise in a patient with acute pancreatitis. We're going to review 6 of them. You'll be given 10 multiple choice questions and 5 seconds to determine your answer for each one. Keep track of your score. Question 1. Which pancreatitis complication may be confused with a fluid-filled stomach? The correct answer is F. Pseudocyst. Pseudocyst form near the stomach in the lesser sac and may be overlooked. Question 2. A patient with a large pseudocyst experiences extreme pain and now has free fluid within the abdomen. This is most likely. The correct answer is B. Pancreatic ascites. The fluid will contain high amounts of amylase. Question 3. This type of pancreatitis is more likely after a large fatty meal or alcohol binge. The correct answer is D. Hemorrhagic pancreatitis. Question 4. This complication is common with acute pancreatitis and appears within 4 weeks of onset. The correct answer is E. Fluid collections. Question 5. This thick-walled complication can lead to GI bleeds and pseudoaneurysms. It must be treated before rupture, as mortality increases. The correct answer is F. Pseudocyst. Question 6. This type of complication causes tissue to die inside and outside of the pancreas creating cystic and solid components on ultrasound. The correct answer is C. Necrotic collections. Question 7. This type of pancreatitis causes pus to form between fascial planes. The correct answer is A. Phlegmonous pancreatitis. Question 8. This type of pancreatitis will undergo visual changes as the fluid collections associated with it ages. The correct answer is D. Hemorrhagic pancreatitis. Question 9. This complication usually appears within 4 to 6 weeks of acute pancreatitis. The correct answer is F. Pseudocyst. Last question. Question 10. A pancreatic abscess can form well after 4 weeks and is fatal if left untreated. They are closely associated with phlegmonous pancreatitis and blank? The correct answer is C. Necrotic collections. Pancreatic abscesses will appear as hypoechoic masses, with thick walls, septations and air.
And that's the end of round 2. There were 10 points in that round. Round 3. Inherited Diseases and the Pancreas There are three inherited diseases that can cause multiple cysts to form on the pancreas. They are polycystic disease, von Hippel-Lindau, and cystic fibrosis. In this round, you will match characteristics to their correct condition. You have 15 seconds to read and sort the definitions of these conditions. Let's check the answers. Polycystic disease causes multiple benign cysts to form on many organs, including the liver and kidney. Von Hippel-Lindau causes multiple benign and cancerous cysts and tumors to form on multiple organs. Cystic fibrosis affects cells that produce mucus, sweat and digestive juices, causing them to become thick. You have 15 seconds to read and sort the ultrasound appearance of these conditions. Let's check the answers. Polycystic disease on ultrasound shows multiple simple appearing cysts of varying sizes. Von Hippel-Lindau on ultrasound shows multiple cysts of varying size and calcifications. Cystic fibrosis on ultrasound shows multiple cysts and an increase in echogenicity due to fatty infiltration. And that's it for round 3. Not too bad right? There were only 6 points in that round. Round 4. Tumors of the pancreas. There are pathologies that cause tumors to grow on the pancreas. The four we will review are the cystic tumors, serous cystadenoma and mucinous cystadenoma, and the solid tumors, gastrinoma and insulinoma. All of these tumors have potential to become malignant. You will be given clues for each pathology. Each pathology will be worth up to 5 points. Keep track of the points listed for each clue with the black numbers. The sooner you guess it, the more points you get. Good luck. Outcome favorable with resection. Malignant 60% of the time. Tends to affect younger adults. Not well seen by ultrasound. Gastrectomy may be needed. Associated with peptic ulcers. Related to Zollinger Ellison syndrome. Second most common functional tumor. Increased gastrin. Also known as a G cell tumor. Did you get gastrinoma? Make sure to mark down how many points you got. Pause the video if you want to review this information. The other functional endocrine tumor is called an insulinoma. You can pause the video here and read the insulinoma information. Slow growing. Related to diabetes and hypertension. Affects females. Middle age to elderly. You can palpate the large mass. Clear borders, well circumscribed. Clear. Thick fluid. Thin or thick walled. Increased risk for turning malignant. Cysts with calcifications are worrisome. Other names include mucinous cystadenoma. Macrocystic tumors are also known as mucinous cysts or mucinous cyst adenomas. If they are cancerous they are referred to as mucinous cyst adenocarcinomas. A biospy is needed to determine malignancy. Pause the video if you'd like to review macrocystic characteristics. The other cystadenoma is the serous cystic tumor. Again, you can pause to read more about the serous variation. And that's round 4 out the door. There were a total of 10 points in that round.
Round 5. Malignant Pathology of the Pancreas. Help me fill out this crossword about pancreatic malignancies. First clue. One down. We need an eight-letter word for the most common parapancreatic cancer. Ah, oh, yes, it is lymphoma. Let's go to three across. Starting with M, we need the primary cancer that is most likely to metastasize to the pancreas. Good, melanoma fits. Good start, four across. Starting with H, pancreatic cancer is most commonly found in this portion of the pancreas. Yes, the head of the pancreas. Ew, two down has a lot of letters. An enlarged gallbladder due to a pancreatic head mass is known as a blank gallbladder. Oh, I think it's a French sounding word. Of course, Cavassier gallbladder. That was a hard one. Okay, six across. This procedure is also known as a pancreaticoduodenectomy. Nice. It is a Whipple procedure. The pancreas head, CBD, gallbladder and the proximal duodenum are removed. Let's see. 5 down. With 11 down, you should look for these if pancreatic cancer is suspected. Two words. Good one. Yes, we need to look for lymph nodes in the porta hepatic area and around the pancreas head. All right. Another long one. 10 across. This is the most common primary pancreas cancer. Adenocarcinoma. You got it. Okay, the next one. 8 down. 7 letters. Like 12 across, this type of pancreatitis is also a risk factor for developing pancreas cancer. Chronic pancreatitis can lead to pancreas cancer. Jumping to 9 down, cancers in this portion of the pancreas tend to be larger and more invasive. The tail. Cancers in the head are more common, but adenocarcinoma in the tail is more likely to spread to nearby organs. Okay, another short one. 11 down. With 5 down, if pancreas cancer is suspected you should also look for, liver blank. It starts with M. Mets. Yeah. By the time symptoms are present it is not uncommon for adenocarcinoma to have spread to the lymph nodes in the liver. Let's try 12 across. With 8 down, this endocrine disorder is also a risk factor for developing pancreatic cancer. Diabetes. Yes, diseases that affect the pancreas can lead to more serious conditions. Almost done. 7 down. Pancreatic adenocarcinoma arises from the ductal cells that are part of the blank function of the pancreas. The ductal cells are part of the exocrine function of the pancreas. The hormonal part is the endocrine function. Last clue. 13 down. This might be tricky. Abbreviation. This procedure uses dye and fluoroscopy to view the patency of the pancreatic and bile ducts. ERCP stands for endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography. That's the end of round 5. There were 13 points available. That is also the end of the pancreas pathology review. Thanks for playing along today on Name That Pathology. Hope you had some fun and learned something new. We'll see you next time.